the idea of the pole shifts. Mm. Magnetic poles. The magnetic pole shifted and the earth did like a 90 degree yeah. tilt. No. See, now there, yeah. a lot of these people that are speculating don't really even be, seem to understand the difference between the, the magnetic pole and the geographic pole. The geographic pole is the earth's axis of rotation, right? The magnetic pole doesn't necessarily com exactly coincide. In fact, it's it migrates. It doesn't coincide with the axis, the geographic pole, which is the axis of rotation. Those are two different things. Yeah. Now, the I believe, you know, I've looked deeply into that when I was first studying catastrophism, looking at the work of Velikovsky and, and uh, um, Charles Hapgood and others. Charles Hapgood po saw the catastrophic history of the earth. He was trying to come up with an explanation. He came up with a relatively sophisticated model of crustal shift, not the whole mass of the planet, because he looked at the map the of The crust, it. right, exactly. Right. Earth crust displacement was his theory. Earth, right. I so think, it becomes disconnected from like the mantle? Yes. The athenosphere, the the yes. the, the plasticky kind of yes. connection. You can think of the earth as like the, the crust as being like the skin on an apple. That's like a relative... Uh, right. the thickness of it, right? But beneath that, we have we have varying degrees of like plasticity and connection. Mm -hmm. So it's like the the, the, earth, the the tectonic plates are sliding around on what is it? The athenosphere that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has this plasticky kind of properties to it. And Hapgood proposed that that could have been disconnected and shifted violently or suddenly, right. and then and causing he, catastrophe. He proposed that actually before continental drift was accepted by mainstream geophysics and geology really yes yeah but of course then when uh continental drift came along this was a much slower process where hapgood was envisioning something much faster now I, i'm not sure i'm 100 percent correct but i'm pretty sure that that uh, hapgood abandoned that idea <clears throat> eventually he didn't abandon yep. the idea of catastrophism just the mechanism that caused catastrophism. Yeah. Now I have a it's very different. I think that back to the to the subject of isostatic compensation, but you figure the again, an equal the geoid in equilibrium is spinning on its axis. So now remember the 13 mile difference between mm -hmm. the equator the, and the arctic. That's the radius, yes. Radius. Yes. Okay. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, radius. The radius. The the diameter's double that, twenty six miles. So you're you're so now you picture this. If you have a huge redistribution of surface mass, so let's say that the that the weight of the ice over North America depresses the area of North America under the thickest ice by a couple of thousand feet. Well, now it's not in equilibrium with its latitude anymore, is it? Because all of the surface of the Earth's crust, if it's in equilibrium, you know, the northern latitudes are going to be miles closer to the Earth's center of mass than the equatorial. But now what happens if you change that distance by thousands of feet, or maybe even in the case of the ocean bottoms, a mile or two, right? Now it's, it's not in equilibrium anymore. It, 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 there's there's not that correlation between the latitude and the distance from the Earth's center of mass. Mm. Could that then lead to an accelerated plate tectonics where the planet is trying to regain that equilibrium? So in other words, if if you've got large parts, the, nor the half of North America is depressed by 1,000, 2,000 feet, and then all of a sudden it's and I say all of a sudden in a geological sense over a few thousand years, yeah. it's moved away from the center of mass. Now it's the distance that it would want to be if it was at a much more southerly latitude. Does that make sense? It makes I think sense so. It does. Yes. I think yes. so. Yeah, so then then the Earth, it's trying to reseek equilibrium, which I think what you're saying is, is it, it could that possibly cause a, vi a kind of a violent... Yes. Adjustment, which leads to volcanism. A period of accelerated plate tectonics yeah, is how which I is, would ah, call it. So it's the which weight. Bad news. You're saying it's the weight from... It's the mass. The, yeah. Or the mass of the ice sheets okay, on top so, of... Again, picture this oblate sphere. It's bulged out this way. Right. So at the equator, it's 13 miles, and it's happy there. Now, 
go 45 degrees north, halfway to the North Pole. Well, now it's six and a half miles closer, right? Go even further. Now it might be 10 miles closer, right? Now, all of a sudden, let's imagine that it shifts upward by thousands of feet. Now, where it wants to be to be happy is going to be further south. It's going to want to be farther away from the Earth's center of gravity. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. And what would cause that to happen? Melting glaciers. Melting glaciers. (laughs) Because you've got this huge redistribution of mass. Right. Okay. From off of the land surfaces into the ocean basins. Mm. And during the onset of a glacial age, you've got the opposite. You're drawing out trillions and trillions of tons of water from the ocean, piling it up on land, and now that weight is pushing Mm. the land down by perhaps several thousand feet. At the same time, you're removing that weight from the ocean basins, which is going to cause the ocean basins to want to rise. So picture glacial interglacial. You've got water being extracted from the oceans, building up on the land surface. From glacial back to interglacial, this is all melting and going back into the ocean. So if you look at over a long period of time, hundreds of thousands of years, oscillation, glacial, interglacial, glacial, interglacial, the shape of the geoid is pulsating in response to that redistribution of surface mass. Right. Now, I think there's a possibility, and I'm not a geophysicist, but I think it would be a possibility that that could introduce this disequilibrium that would cause the movement of the plates to try to shift. And once they start moving, the inertia of that movement, they're not going to necessarily stop because clearly, like Hapgood was right, I think, you know, when you look at Orogenesis, mountain building, have you ever been up in Canadian Rockies and look at these incredible overthrust faults? That's a future Yeah, I'd love to tour, see that. by yeah. the way, where you yeah. have slabs of rock thousands of feet thick thrust up over other, forming these mountain ranges. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, you can look at rates of erosion, and the higher you get material up, the faster the rate of erosion. The problem with mountains is this, that seems to be ignored, is that when you look at rates of erosion or downcutting, they're roughly, and if mountains are being built by continental drift, and continental drift is a few centimeters or a few inches per year, that would mean that they're moving, it's causing the, 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 the plates to buckle and raise the mountains. Right. Well, the uplift of the mountains isn't going to be any faster than the lateral movement of the plates. But we've got mountains that are 10, 12, 13,000, 15,000 feet high. Yet, when you look at the rates of downcutting and erosion, the rates of downcutting, of erosion, the the eating away of the mountain masses being uplifted is roughly equal to the rate of uplift. How'd they get up there? How'd they get up there? Unless the rate of uplift was a whole lot faster. Way faster. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, there's, there's, I, I think places like Tiwanaku in, in the, in the, you know, the the Andes mountain range is like that's a huge mystery about how yeah. the hell that, that whole plateau got up there and how it could have supported that the amount of life that was required to create a city of that magnitude. There are some real clues to, to something potentially happening at a, a faster rate. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's like a, a day, like the, the uh, right. flipping over. There's too much inertia in the system and right, right. too much stability in the system for that type of thing. Just personally, again, I'm not a geo, geo, geophysicist either, but yeah, I'm, I, I do, I am interested in the, the idea that something could have caused a, a, a fairly, at least geologically, quite rapid yeah. shift in, uh, in the Earth's crust or in at you know places like mountain ranges. So I think we need to kind of recon. See, I think we need to go back, take a kind of another look at the geological history of our planet within the context of catastrophism. Yeah.